Welcome to Learn It Training. The exercise files for today's course are located in the video description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey everybody, this is Fast Kareem with Learn It. And in this video, we're going to be covering the new Outlook. I'm sure you clicked on this video because you've realized Microsoft has completely changed the desktop app for Outlook. It matches the online version of Outlook quite a bit now, but I know a lot of the desktop users aren't too familiar with the online version. So I'm glad you made it to this video where we'll be covering the new Outlook. Now this is a two-part series, so be sure to check out part two after you've completed part one today. In this lesson, we're gonna be covering the interface. Since you're new to the new Outlook, we'll be doing a tour of the interface before we dive in and discuss how we can set up our email accounts. We'll talk about how we can use the new Outlook desktop app to compose and send our emails. Talk about the various messaging options that are available. We'll talk about how we can use the inbox to help us manage our emails, whether it be sort, filter, or search. And then we'll dive into the calendar, focusing on the basics of our calendar, scheduling appointments, meetings, and changing basic calendar settings. We'll also talk about our Outlook contacts, which they refer to as people. Before wrapping up the lesson plan with using our task list, which integrates very nicely with Microsoft To Do which is another standalone app that you can use on your mobile, PC, or on the web. But it's nice to know that it integrates with your Outlook task list, so all of your tasks are in one area for you. Let's get started. Looking to support our channel and get a great deal? Become a member today to unlock ad-free videos. That's right, your favorite courses without a single ad. Interested in a specific video? Purchase one of our ad-free courses individually. Looking for even more? Gain access to exams, certificates, and exclusive content at learnitanytime.com. More information can be found in the video description below. All right, let's get into the new interface. Now, if you're one of the users that are unsure about how to get the new Outlook, there should be a toggle on your desktop app allowing you to switch to the new Outlook. And if it's your first time doing that, it might ask you to download it and it'll take a second or two before it lets you switch to the new Outlook. And then it restarts and it reopens back up to this version. Now, if you don't have that toggle, try checking with your IT department. And if you don't have an IT department, try updating your app. See if the app update will allow you to get the toggle there. I'm over here in the new Outlook and let's begin with a quick interface tour. At the very top of the app, I just want to point out a couple of things. We still have our Outlook search that we know and love, but there's a few additions at the very top here. We have something called My Day. We give that a click, it pops up the to-do section, as well as the calendar section. And if I need to, I can also click on my notifications here to pop up the notifications that have recently come in. There's also settings that I can change from here. And some tips, since this is a somewhat new tool with a different layout and interface, and some features will be available versus some features won't from the older versions of Outlook. They've opened up a nice little tips section to help you try out some of these things or set up some of these things that you typically do in Outlook. This is a little notification from my calendar here. We still have access to the ribbon. In the new version of Outlook, we still get access to the ribbon. And if I notice here, this little drop-down arrow, let me give a click on that. 
there's two different versions of the ribbon that I can be using. Now right now, I'm looking at something called the Classic Ribbon. The Classic Ribbon allows me to see the tabs, Home, View, Help, as well as the command groups, New, Delete, Respond, Move, Quick Steps, Tags. If I switch this over to the Simplified Ribbon, it actually minimizes a lot of my ribbon. And I still have access to the majority of the tools here, but they're just tucked away inside of this ellipses. Hence called the simplified ribbon, simplifying it for us. Going back over to my classic ribbon. Now in the ribbon, we have this icon, the hamburger icon, I like to call it here. And when I give that a click, it actually shows the navigation pane or it hides the navigation pane. And this allows me to see my folders, my favorite section. Keep in mind, I can also expand and collapse this section altogether as well and resize it. Now on the left hand side here, we have a navigation menu. We get access to our mailbox from here. And if you don't know this, there's actually keyboard shortcuts you can use to access these areas of Outlook. The control key and the number one will open up the mail. We also get access to the calendar. And we can use control and the number two and in case we need to manage our contacts, which are referred to as people, we can use control and the number three. And then of course we get access to our groups, the Microsoft To-Do app, Viva, Bookings, OneDrive, and any additional apps that our organizations allow us to install and use. In previous versions of Outlook, they used to have this interface down here. And some users would have it with icons versus words, but now it's moved up here for us with the integration of a few other apps that we can choose to use. Besides the navigation pane, we also get access to our inbox. Our inbox allows us to change the way we filter, sort, and view the messages inside of our email account. And then on the right hand side here, we also get access to the reading pane, where we can read the messages and respond to them directly from here. So there's quite a bit to Outlook. We have our ribbon with the two different views, classic and simplified. The ribbon gets organized into tabs and command groups. We got our navigation menu with the folder pane, allowing us to navigate the apps as well as our emails and different folders or inboxes. We have our actual inbox here, allowing us to read our messages or view our messages before we can actually click on them and select them to read them. If you're noticing, and if you're coming from older versions of Outlook, there's no status bar at the very bottom, which would tell you how many emails are in your inbox or how many emails you have selected, whether or not you're connected to the Exchange server. We'll see if Microsoft decides to add them in a future update. Now, one thing I wanna do for this interface tour is I wanna click on this little gear icon for the settings of Outlook. And in the settings there, under general, we have the ability to go over to the appearance settings. And in case you're wondering why your outlook might look like a different color than mine, it might be that you're using a different theme, like you're using the light theme versus the dark theme, 
or you've picked a different classic theme than me. So I think it'd be nice if you open up your Outlook and take a look at this little gear icon. And before you move on to the next portion of the video, see if you can pick your appearance. Whether or not you want to use the light app mode, the dark app mode, or have it adjust to your system settings. Or just select one of the classic themes or even some of the modern themes that they've added in. Let's talk about using the new Outlook to compose and send email messages. In the Home tab of Outlook, we have a command group called New where you can compose new email messages. If you click on the drop down here, you can also compose new events, groups, storyline posts, and even access to online version of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint directly through Outlook. I'm going to compose my new email. Now, the new email message is going to pull up in the reading pane. However, here it's suggesting me for a tip that I can change this setting to make it the default to always pop out the message. For right now, I'll hit not interested, but it is letting me know that I can always go to the settings. And I have access to that under mail. The pop out settings. So right now I've chosen to write in line and that's why the messages show up in the reading pane. I'm going to go back and close this. Now I have the ability to zoom into the message if I need to. Discard the message. And even pop it out if I choose to at a later time into a separate window. I can turn on the BCC from here. And I can add my subject. And if I need to, I can mention someone's name to add them to the two line. Now, whenever I'm creating a message, you get access to a new tab, quite a few new tabs. Right now, I'm on the messaging tab. Now, the messaging tab gives me quite a bit of options to work with for my message. Let me just create some text in my message here. I'll use the random function to generate one paragraph with about five sentences in there. There we go. And we have this ability to use the messaging tab to format and adjust the fonts even add in styles. If we need to, we can attach files directly from here. And if we need to, we can also create tables and insert emojis or pictures. Now, if I do decide to pop out this message, I want you to know that those tabs messaging, insert, format, text will now show up in the new window. I still have access to the same options, they're just now in a separate window. And a lot of these options that are found in the messaging tab are scattered throughout the other tabs. The draw tab is great for those touchscreen devices. Although not required, but nice to have one. Now in the messaging tab, we have the ability to insert tables directly into our emails, and we can even draw them out from here. I can also insert emojis. Now keep in mind, if you're using an operating system, that's a Windows operating system, as long as it's above Windows 10, you can also just use the Windows key and a period. Uh, this will also pull up an emoji keyboard for you, so you're not fully dependent on just the Outlook emojis. So you can actually use this anywhere on your computer here. So. 
in a sense, these editing tools that we have available uh, for crafting up our messages are pretty advanced. Some of them come from our different tools like Microsoft Word, like the styles. I have the ability to attach files from my cloud services if I need to. There's also this insert inline feature. Now that slash there, insert inline, allows me to search for documents. Really cool stuff if you needed to attach something directly to the email there. So now that we're seeing all the options that we have available for the messages, I can send this message directly now or even send up a scheduled send to send it at a later time. That way I can control directly when this message shows up in the other user's inbox. I think it'd be nice if you open up your new Outlook interface and practice crafting a new email. See if you can access your table tools, your emojis, your styles, and try to see if your mentioning works. And if you have yet to practice the new inline attachment style, give a go at that so that you can get a hang of it. Now, one thing you might need to do to get started with the Outlook desktop app is add your email account. Now, the navigation pane allows you to add more than one. If you're unsure about how to add an email account, you can do all of that good stuff from the settings. I'm going to give a click on that gear icon to open up the settings for my accounts. And under the settings here for my accounts, I have the ability to manage, sign in, and add new email accounts and connect them to Outlook. As you can see, you can have more than one. I'm already logged in and signed in and ready to go. Let's talk a little bit about managing your inbox using the new Outlook. Right now, I currently have my inbox in the favorite section of my navigation pane. Now, if you're wondering how I've done that, as I simply favorited the folder. If I do this to a folder, I can right click it and add it to the favorites. The Outlook favorite section is a collapsible section that you can add to your navigation pane by heading over to the view tab. It's under the folder pane settings here. So if you don't have a favorite section, it might be hidden. Now, I'm going to unpin a folder. And if I need to, I have the ability to create new folders for my folder pane. I can right click and create a new subfolder in my inbox, or I can right click my account and create a new folder. Noticing how in the new Outlook, the folder tab is gone. Important to know that you can still create folders with the right click, folder or subfolder. Now we also get to see all of our inbox messages. And if you're unaware, Microsoft Outlook has a setting in the View tab. Inside of the Messages command group, you have a setting for Message Preview so that you can't see the body message or the body text of a message and only the subject lines inside of your inbox. I have that currently set up. I also have a setting called conversations turned on. The conversation setting allows me to group the messages that are all a part of the same conversation into one row. You're going to notice that a lot of my emails have this little expandable and collapsible arrow near there. This lets me know that this email is part of a chain of a conversation. And 
If I have this turned off, it will show each message in their own separate row, making it kind of hard to read the full conversation. Besides being able to turn on conversation view, you also have the ability to search your inbox entirely. Now keep in mind, when you're searching for the inbox, you can search folders or the entire inbox itself. Now besides having this search to manage your inbox, you also have the ability to filter or sort, I should say, based off who the message is from. The subject lines. And when the message was received. If I look at the very top header here, near the select option, where this allows me to open up the select icon to select multiple messages at once, I have a filter option. Right now it's filtered for all of my messages, but I can filter for just my unread messages, messages that I flag for follow-up, messages that are sent directly to me or any message that has attachments, or any email that I've currently been mentioned in. And at the very bottom here, I have sorting options. Right now, I'm sorting my emails based off the date the messages have come in. But I can switch the category, from, size, importance, and even the subject. A very common sort is oldest on top in case you're searching for older emails. In the View tab, I also have View Settings. I have the ability to turn on my focused inbox. I have the option to show the text size and spacing. Right now, I have the text size set to large. For the message organizations, I have them currently grouped by conversation. And I put the newest messages on the bottom of the conversation. I currently show deleted items from the conversation. I control the message height. Whether or not the message has a sender image. And even where the reading pane is going to be shown. I can even control if I want the sender name first or if I want the subject name first in the message list. Controlling whether or not you want to show the attachments, the preview of the attachments in line. I can control whether or not the date header shows up in the message list. and whether or not message reminders pop up, and if I want animations to pop up when I'm hovering over the messages. A lot of different customizations we can have for our inbox here. There's no right way to set up the inbox, but it's more of a personal preference of how you want to interact with your inbox and messages using the new Outlook. So if you haven't done so yet, head over to your View tab and take a look at some View settings. A lot of these View settings that we've discussed are also available in the ribbon. Like if you want to hide your reading pane or show it a different area, collapse the folder pane, adjust the ribbon, control the density of the Outlook app, control reminders as well. Outlook also allows you to manage your appointments and emails directly through the app using their calendar. Now I'm currently viewing my Outlook calendar. I went over there from my navigation pane. 
and I'm on the home tab. And when I do that, when I go to the home tab of my calendar, you're going to notice that it's a different setup now. The home tab is going to show me my calendar tools in the ribbon. I have a new for new events. I have a command group called arrange to help me rearrange my calendar. I have a command group called filter to help me filter my calendar of events. An option to share and the ability to print my calendar. When I'm looking at the home tab of my calendar, I can also see a small preview of the month so that I can toggle different days on my calendar. And at the very bottom of this, I can have the ability to add additional calendars or show other shared calendars that I have available in Outlook and view other calendars from the accounts that I'm signed into. I also have a view tab, but similar to our mailbox, a lot of the stuff that you see here will be scattered across these various tabs. So if I click on view, I'm going to see the command group called arrange. I still have the ability to toggle the different views, but now I can have a saved view. I have the ability to adjust the time scales and open up the calendar settings. The last tab, Help, will let me get some support, help, feedback, and even switch back to the classic Outlook if I needed to. In the new Outlook, the day view allows you to control how many days you want to view. I can switch over to the work week, which simply excludes the weekends. And the week includes the weekends. And the last view month is great, but I want you to know that in the month view, you won't see the time zones that you've set up. Besides being able to switch the arrangement of the calendar, you can also filter what's being shown on the calendar. Appointments are essentially appointments have bookings with just you. There's no one else involved. While meetings may have others invited to them. A lot of different filtering options. You can filter for meetings and whether or not you're the organizer. Whether or not you're an attendee and whether you've accepted it, declined it, or whatever your response may be for it. You can also filter for categories as well. Filter for show ads and even reoccurrences. If I need to, I can share my calendar as well. With other users in my organization. The print option for the calendar is also available in the home tab in case I needed to print out the calendar. I can choose what view I want to print out and whether or not I want to show the mini month on the side, the detailed agendas. Outlook also has the weather for up to uh, multiple locations here, multiple locations. So here I can have multiple locations if I need to. I can choose whether or not I'm in the office or if I'm remote, and I can even set a schedule from here. I'm going to head over to the View tab. Because not only do we have the ability to adjust our views, 
But whatever view that we create, whether it be us adjusting the time scale, creating a filter, we can save the view. And this can become a new view that we have available for our calendar to switch to. Now keep in mind, we also have access to deeper calendar settings from the view tab. This can also be found from this gear icon, but this takes you directly to the tab that you need to go to. It takes us over to our calendar settings. Under view, I have the ability to show what the first day of the week would be, how the time scale will interact. If I want to show the week numbers on the calendar, what time zones I want to display. So you can add more than one and more than four as well. I can also choose to add online invitations to the events that I create automatically using Microsoft Teams or Zoom. I can control the weather from here as well. This just takes me to that area when I click on this. I can control and create automatic events from like airline flights or reservations from my email to my calendar. Anyone coming from Apple apps may uh, be very familiar with this. I can control my shared calendar settings and set up customized actions to see what options show up when I'm actually creating a meeting the send to OneNote option, the Zoom option, my templates, the get add-ins, these are all gonna be available as many icons I can select when scheduling a meeting. If you are unsure what bookings is, it's a great way to have users select calendar appointment times without needing to reach out to you. You do need to set up a bookings page, but once you do that, you can set this up in your Outlook email signature to select available appropriate times on your calendar without any need to contact you. And at the very bottom here, I can set up my work hours and my locations for the various days of the weeks and the times and display this on the calendar. So a lot of good calendar settings here. Let's talk about managing contacts in Outlook. Now they're known as people so when you hover over the little contacts icon, it's going to say people. And when you open up the home tab, you're going to notice there isn't too many tools available for your contacts. I have the ability to create new contacts or contact lists. I can edit any existing contacts if I need to. I can delete contacts. I can add new contacts and even remove contacts from my favorites if they're added to my favorites. If I choose to, I can choose to import contacts and export contacts. There isn't too many views for your contacts now. This one page is gonna display all the information you need to see about your contact. The overview page, the contact organization, files, messages, and LinkedIn. Each one of these sections will show different areas of the contacts information, like what files they've recently accessed, their contact information, and if the org chart is set up, will be displayed here. You can search for any files they've recently sent, any messages the user has sent, as well as search for their LinkedIn profile directly from here. If I need to, I can go over to the View tab and click on People Settings. And this allows me to display the contacts by last name or first name from here. But there isn't too much to our view settings besides that for the contacts. Now something that you can create in your contacts is something known as a contact list.
I can actually create a list of email addresses to send an email to many people at one time. When I create this contact list, it shows up in my contact list section. And I can use this to message all three instructors at once when I'm creating an email. When I manage contacts, I have the ability to export my contacts, creating a file that I can import into other apps. Or I can choose to import a file like a CSV file to create my contacts in Outlook. If you're new to Outlook and need to get your contacts imported, the Home tab is definitely a great area to go. Once your contacts are imported, try creating a few contact lists to make it easier for you to craft up your emails. Once the contact lists are created, keep in mind you can organize your contacts based off contacts and contact lists. And you can also have the ability to favorite certain contacts. This allows them to show up in the favorite section of the contacts. Let's talk about the Microsoft To Do app, which is pretty well integrated into Outlook now. So when you click on To Do, it's going to open up the To Do app, but it takes you over to Outlook on the web. And from here, you can actually see the Outlook interface. We're just on the to-do portion at the current moment. The to-do app opens up in an area called My Day. If you're unsure about what to do with My Day, it's a good idea to start your day with a, a general task list of what needs to get completed. Got to take the dog out for a walk. Now, my day resets every day. I have the ability to add certain things from my day into my important list. I have the ability to add a due date for certain tasks. If this is due on a certain day, I can add a due date by selecting the task. I could set up a reminder as well. And if I need to, I can make this a reoccurrence, assign categories to the tasks. These are coming from my Outlook categories. Attach files and even notes. If I need to, I can discard this task altogether. Let me go ahead and collapse this area. The My Day section allows you to sort your task based off the importance, due date, alphabetically, and the creation date. I can also group the tasks based off the categories that I mark them with. Now when I go over to the Plan section, the Plan section is actually going to show me any emails that I flagged from Outlook. I can select these and set up a due date, category, add an attachment, or read the details. The Assign to Me section will actually show you any plans coming from planner boards across various groups you've been assigned to. Microsoft Planner is a task management tool. That's online and a mobile app, entirely free to use with Microsoft 365. If your organization is using that, a lot of folks have had a hard time finding the various tasks. It's nice to know that they're nicely found in one area, and that's Microsoft to do. Any emails that you decide to flag for follow up in Outlook will also show up here. And you have the ability to see them under planned if you assign a due date, all that good stuff as well. As well as any tasks that you decide to create. I can see under my day I have three different tasks, but this will show me all tasks overall that I have for today. 
Microsoft To Do also allows you to do something called create a list so that you can organize your tasks across various lists. When you open up the app, it's going to give you one list called Getting Started. It talks about how you can add your first task. Already did that one. It talks about how you can break the task into smaller steps, adding things to the details of the task. It even mentions a little bit about how you can use hashtags to categorize your messages or your tasks. Be sure to check this out if you're new to using tasks or to do for a nice little idea of an example task list. All right, in this series, we went through the new Outlook interface, a little bit about setting up your email accounts, the new composing and sending email tools, how we can manage our inbox, the basics to our calendar, the basics to contacts management, and a nice tour of tasks and to-do lists. Be sure to check out part two of the series for some more advanced features on the Outlook app. Stay tuned, everybody, and thanks for attending. Thanks for watching. To earn certificates and watch our courses without ads, check out learnitanytime.com.